This video is sponsored by MPB. Oh, it looks cold in there. Not for me. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Again, I seem to interrupt most of my videos with these bits back in my office now. Now, reason for the interruption, I was looking at some of my comments the other day. I say looking, I was reading them. And it seemed that there was a general air of, um, how do I put this? A lack of enthusiasm for the number of gear videos that I've had on my channel recently. And I kind of get it, if you look at my channel, there are lots of thumbnails that feature specific cameras and lots of titles that insinuate that I'm gonna talk at least in part about particular cameras, lenses, that kind of stuff. And most of the reason for that, as many of you will know, is that uh, for the past year or so, I've been trying to find a more fun camera than my Sony's that I love the output of, but I just find them a little bit tedious to use. And so I've been testing lots of different cameras. That though, as a process, is coming to an end. I think there's this video, maybe a couple more videos after that, and then there won't be any more because I found a solution, I believe. And I don't think any of you believe that, but uh, trust me, I have. And so the videos then will be all just about photography. And I mean, I try and make these videos about photography. This one, for instance, is mostly about photography, but I'm just talking a little bit about lens as well. And I, I get that some people don't like that but it's coming to an end. Anyway, yes, this video is, um, I talk a little bit about a lens that I was trying. Uh, I won't tell you what it is, I'll, I'll stop the interruption and just let you get back to the video. Yeah. Right, I should probably get on with this. Uh, the lens that I'm talking about is this. Uh, it's the Sony 50 millimeter F1.2 GM lens. And uh, I think I've said all those things in the right order. Uh, and this is a bit of a strange lens type for uh, outdoor kind of landscape photography. Uh, because there are lots of landscape photographers not the slightest bit fussed about things like shallow depth of field because what they typically want is everything in the scene in focus. And for me, there are lots of times when I feel like that, but there are also times where I want to use shallow depth of field to make certain things in my frame more prominent. And sometimes when that's what I want to achieve, I do find that I'm a little bit limited by the f2.8 on my zoom. And so long story short, I often find myself thinking, hmm, I wonder how often I would use a lens like this. And basically, that's what I'm aiming to track over the course of the next few days. So uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, well, I'll level with you folks. It's a week later and I've not really had all that much of a chance to use this lens, which probably tells me everything I need to know about how much I need it. But uh, I had a choice this evening, either I could sit in my airport hotel room or I could come out and shoot. So I thought I'd, I'd come out and test it before I need to send it back. Uh, also, I'm in Iceland now, um, probably a part of Iceland you've not seen that much of if you've not been here, because this is just where the airport is and everybody basically just drives through it. I don't think all that many people stop here because it's not, the most picturesque part of the island, but uh, I thought it was worth coming out and, and seeing what I could shoot. Uh, I reckon this is probably a fair representation of the sort of stuff I'm gonna be shooting this evening. It smells quite a lot of fish, as you may expect. Uh, this is a town called Keflavik, by the way, if you've not been to Iceland. Uh, and I've spent a lot of time here over the years waiting for planes, but I've never shot here. So it does feel quite exciting to to come and take a look at it, even if it's paintings of fish. Oh, here's something you might find a bit mad as well. I had the chance to go to the volcano this evening with Nigel and Mass, who've both gone, but I chose not to for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, I don't think I can add to the hundreds of thousands of photos that have been taken of the volcanoes over the past few years. So as much as I want to see it, I'm not too fussed about photographing it. Uh, number two, I go home tomorrow after two and a half weeks away to my two-year-old. 
and I want to do so on more than two hours sleep, which wouldn't have been possible visiting the volcano. So instead I'm, I'm photographing walls of fish. Bit mad. <laughs> Iceland, isn't it? No. I've got to be honest, F1 2 has uh, so far not been as handy as I thought it might be. I mean, times like that with the sofa, for instance, you can have the sofa in focus and not the fence, and that looks kind of cool. Not suggesting that's a good shot, just a demonstration of what's possible. But how useful that is in practical situations, oh, I don't think it's as useful as I initially thought it would be. And there have been times over the past couple of weeks where I have used a very shallow depth of field and I've liked the effect. But the thing with this lens is that it weighs significantly more than my 24 to 70, which to me I think means I've got to be using the benefits of this lens an awful lot to justify this lens. And the benefits really are the, uh, the very fast aperture. Uh, well, that was good fun. I very much enjoyed that day. Uh, the photos that I showed you at the start of the video, they were all from Reykjavik earlier that day. Uh, and then we moved over to Keflavik. And uh, yeah, I had a blast. And I don't know if I made the right decision not going to the volcano to see it, but Noah was very pleased to see me. And I don't think he'd have seen me if I hadn't have had any sleep. It had just seen sort of a, a shell. And also, I am just loving, as many of you have noticed, uh, the process of trying to document more sort of everyday places at the moment. Don't know why, I've not really questioned it, but I'm, I'm preferring shooting those to sort of grander, more dramatic places. And I suppose an active volcano is quite a grand, dramatic place. So yeah, no more talk about gear, apart from the sponsor of today's video. So I am very lucky on this channel to have sponsors that I genuinely love to use, and none more so than MPB. Dan, this journey that I've been on over the course of the past year or so to try and find a fun camera, well, MPB has been integral to it because most of the time when I've bought a Ricoh or a Leica or a Fuji or any of the other cameras I've tried, I've used MPB to do so because every time I've made a purchase, I've gotten to see the exact camera that I'm buying or lens or whatever piece of kit it is because everything is photographed individually. Uh, and I've come to really trust their condition assessments of pieces of kit. And I've always been able to arrange convenient delivery, whether it's next day or named day. And you get a six month warranty. And so it's a fantastic service to use in my eyes if you're looking to buy a new camera or lens. And invariably when I've bought those cameras and lenses, most of the time I've ended up selling them back to MPB when I've decided that they're actually not right for me. But that process is even easier than buying because MPB sort out a collection from your house and they then assess the kit when it gets to them and then they'll ask for your bank details and then they pay you. So a huge thank you to MPB for their continued support of this channel and for stocking everything I've needed over the past year or so. And if you're interested in checking them out, then links are in my description. And they operate in multiple territories around the world. So big thank you to them. And uh, yes, next week I will probably be talking about gear. In fact, no, next week I'm not, I don't think. Uh, hello again from future future me this time. It's like an hour after the last clip. You would think, wouldn't you, after like six or seven years of these videos, I would know how to structure them, but uh, no. Anyway, I forgot to mention a tip that I wanted to talk about, which is that when I'm shooting in places like this, sort of more everyday places, one of the things I like to do of a morning, if I'm walking around going, oh, I don't know what to shoot, nothing's really standing out to me. I like to narrow what it is that I'm searching for in some way. So that might be using a fixed focal length, as was the case in this video. Obviously I was using a 50 mil prime, but it might also be things like color or contrast or subject. And I might like to keep my eyes peeled for just one of those things. And in this case, I decided to go with color. Now, to be honest, that's quite easy to do in a place like Scandinavia, because there are lots of bold colors everywhere, lots of red and yellow, as you'll have noticed. 
in Iceland. But I do find it's one good way of getting the creative juices flowing. If you're walking around somewhere going, oh, nothing's standing out. You can make things stand out by looking for specific things. For instance, this guy's backpack is basically the same colours as the ATM. I quite like that. It's like when you're looking to buy a specific model of car. All you notice from that point on is those cars on the road. It's kind of like that. And it can get to a point where it's not helpful. Like if it goes from intentional to unintentional. And if you've been doing it so long that all you end up seeing is, is red and yellow, for instance. That's not good at that point you need to change tack and, and start looking for something new. But sometimes I find it useful. Also, speaking of yellow, you might have noticed through the course of this video, this yellow patch. I'm uh, monitoring my blood glucose. Got some sort of machine in there. Nothing serious, just uh, curiosity. So far, I've learned that I can't have hot chocolate. Well, I can, my body just doesn't like it. Who'd have thought? Particularly when I add Baileys, 